in the session 2 we have discussed started discussing the scope of supply under section 7 why this definition is so important it is so important because what is taxable under the gst law is supply of goods or services or both scope of supply of goods or services or both is the taxable event so whenever there is a supply of goods or services or both gst has to be paid so we are understanding as per section 7 what do you mean by supply of goods or services section 7 in that we have discussed section 7 subsection 1 where the first part that is subsection 1 clause a this is subsection 1 clause a says supply includes all forms of supply of goods or services such as sale barter transfer exchange license rental lease disposal made or agreed to be made for a consideration by one person to another person in the course or furtherance of the business so we try to understand what is goods what is service what do you mean by sale what do you mean by transfer see in all this the the key is the transfer of title to the goods from one person to another person title okay it's not the mere possession if i give only the possession of goods to you it is not transfer of title it only allows you to enjoy it for some time correct if i give my mobile phone to you for two days have i transferred the title to the my mobile phone no i have handed it over sometimes it's a bailment it's also called bailment like sale of goods at bailment pledge mortgage they are not sales they are not there is no transfer of title in the goods there is only transfer of possession in the goods both are different okay okay and remember to transfer the title in the goods it is not necessary that goods should have been physically delivered it may be later it may take place later okay all is there in the in your sale of goods act barter exchange such as license in license lease that is what happens you give only possession but title remains with me lease rental disposal and consideration very important consideration means something in return you are doing something and for that doing something and for that doing something if you are getting something in return that return is called consideration that written that return may be in the form of money or otherwise that return may be given by my buyer or anybody else that is not relevant whether you have received something in return or not whether it is money or otherwise it's okay whether it is given by the recipient or anybody else it is also okay but it does not include very important they may test you in the examination they may give one line item as subsidy given by government for manufacture of these goods is so much then you should not include that in the taxable value because that is not a consideration itself see supply happens only when there is a consideration the consideration definition says subsidy given by government government not by other organizations so if subsidy is given by government it is not consideration when it is not consideration it is not a supply when it is not a supply it is not taxable okay similarly very important deposit given in respect of the supply of goods or services or both shall not be considered as payment made for supply unless the supplier applies such deposit as consideration for the supply sometimes sellers may ask the buyers to make some pre-deposit because they don't believe in them branded people like hul all these big people itc be before you you want to become their franchisee or distributor they say you deposit some money only then i will supply because if something wrong happens they will use the deposit 
okay okay so like that if the buyer is given a deposit sir how do we know that it is a deposit or towards the consideration so what is the accounting treatment given in the books of accounts of the seller is it recorded as a consideration for the supply or is it recorded as a deposit okay it should be recorded as a deposit under his name okay that is also very important from examination point of view you will say supplier uh, customer has deposited one lakh deposit you should not treat it as a consideration then business it includes almost everything trade commerce manufacture etc etc so now we are moving to the next clause of section 7 subsection 1 clause double a what is this the activities or transactions the activities or transactions by a person other than an individual so person definition you remove individual anybody else by a person other than an individual this is by to its members its constituents or vice versa members to a person you understanding by a person other than individual to its members let us say we formed an association we are a club century club rotary club no? country club are there no uh, we all come together hmm? we will establish a club we will register it under a society registration act or a cooperative society or a trust whatever as a non-profit organization and now what we will do we will collect some monies subscriptions that's what happens right monthly annually half yearly we call subscription and we will spend for us why we are collecting club no it's a mutual organization for the benefit of each other we come together for social purpose correct there you will have games food you know cinemas correct clubs so we'll collect money we do all we provide all these facilities for our own members outsiders not allowed no outsiders not allowed this we 10 people formed we 10 only will enjoy no or our 10 families will enjoy outsiders no strictly no okay that's what they are saying by a person to its members or by members to its it to the club club to its members members to its club okay constitute vice versa for cash for deferred payment or other valuable consideration he is giving an explanation for the purpose of this clause it is hereby clarified that notwithstanding what do you mean by the word notwithstanding you often see this word in your law books notwithstanding a particular section starts with notwithstanding anything contained in any any other provisions of this act or it says notwithstanding anything contained in so and so section like that it reads any example any specific section you say hmm? if you read section 62 63 64 it says notwithstanding anything contained in the provisions of section 73 or 74 of the act central goods and service tax act i think how 43b reads have you read 43b of the income tax act huh? to my knowledge notwithstanding anything contained in any other provisions under this chapter the deductions with respect to the following expenditure shall be only based on actual payments made on or before filing the return of income deductions based on actual payments actually deductions are given based on accrual basis right but 43b says no no bonus etc etc i will give deduction only based on payments and there is a recent amendment msme payments micro and small industries there is a new addition to the 43b clause h 
okay coming back notwithstanding that means it overrides this provision overrides the one which it is referring for example 62 says of the cgst act notwithstanding anything contained in section 73 74 that means this is supreme over 73 74 got the point so the term notwithstanding means overriding it will have overriding effect so notwithstanding anything contained in any other law any other law very huge scope okay? any other law <coughs> for the time being in force or any judgment it goes to your next step or a decree decree means an order court order of any court tribunal authority so it is trying to override what any other law so i am the supreme gst law as far as this particular matter is concerned i am the supreme not only that any judgment or order given by any court tribunal i don't mind i will not consider i am you read what i am saying what i am saying the person and its members or constituents in the provision we discussed you know when a person provides any services to its members or vice versa that's what is referring the person and its members or constituent shall be deemed to be two separate persons that is what is it is trying to establish because in order to constitute a supply the supply must be provided by one person to another person if one person provides to oneself there is no supply correct huh? okay so there must be two persons supplier recipient Service provider, service receiver, exporter, importer. Correct? There must be two persons. Why? Why the law is so categorically saying notwithstanding anything contained in any other law, including the judgment of any court, tribunal, etc. Because there is a background for this. In fact, this particular clause has been inserted by finance act 2021 has been inserted this clause still then it is not there because the supreme court in the case of the state of west bengal versus calcutta club limited said supplying services by club to its members do not constitute distinct legal entities due to the concept of mutuality yesterday we discussed no mutuality we come together we collect money we spend for ourselves where is the profit we are all one only we are not see the money which is going around it is our money correct you are giving you are enjoying so under the income tax law also there is a provision income tax is not liable on mutual activities so based on that the court said before that there are various high court judgments gujarat sports club cases where the high courts also said no no clubs are not liable to service tax then the matter went up to supreme court the supreme court also said no they are mutual entities service the service tax cases but service tax law and goods and service tax law the service portion are identical there is no difference that is what just picked up from there so when the supreme court said it is not taxable then everybody will stop paying tax so they amended the section 7 now they are saying this is called retrospective amendment of an act generally amendments will have a prospective effect what do you mean by an amendment 
change a change right a change in law generally unless otherwise specified an amendment to a law will have prospective effect that from today it will be effective it's already done what you going to go back and you will do but sometimes this is what happens it's a beautiful concept to learn retrospective amendment to a law so amended they amended retrospectively to be effective from uh, but the change made in but effective made effective from uh, now these people who are sitting on the sidelines clubs who are not who are, they have not paid gst because they know that the supreme court will give a favorable judgment they have not paid now this section has come section says notwithstanding even the judgment or an order of a court i am applicable i am the supreme so now what they have to do clubs they have, who have not paid now it is mandatory now they have to pay with interest because they are in 22 17 18 19 20 21 they have not paid but last year you have to pay the last four years they have to pay with interest see how dangerous it is you should be very careful the clients and the auditors the chartered accountants the consultants must be very alert keep on cautioning the ssc if something like that is there ask them to pay under protest under protest that means sir i am paying but doesn't mean i am agreeing if tomorrow it is exempt i will have the right to claim refund and time limit for refund is not applicable if you have paid under protest okay so we should advise them so you understood this class very important examination point of view also clubs all mutual associations are liable to pay tax on services provided to its own members notwithstanding anything contrary contained in any other law for the time being in force in india or notwithstanding anything contrary contained in any judgment or of a court tribunal etc this is clause double a so we read two clauses clause a clause double a now clause b section 7 subsection 1 clause b what it says import of services for a consideration whether or not in the course or furtherance of business see that is why section 7 started with the word the term supply includes all forms of supply because see different different stories coming now mutual associations actually they are single entity it is an exception to the first clause a by one person to another person clause w s is one person to oneself also taxable now here what is they are saying import of services for a consideration whether or not in the course or furtherance of business whereas in the first clause what they said Ah, for consideration in the course or furtherance of the business. Now it is an exception. If you are importing something, if you are importing something, import of what? Service. Service. Be very alert while you are reading. In the examination hall, you will get a doubt. Is it import of service or import of goods? I think both. Okay, goods. Goods given. Chalo. because it was not stick to you properly import only you remembered whether it is service or goods you forgot because you have not concentrated on here it says that's why we have we have given highlight import of what ah for consideration there is a consideration but it is not for any business example house renovation i am taking an engineer services from outside india or 
why why is so much complicated you go to an online website you buy a software or a movie by paying some money you are doing no? study materials you may uh, i mean uh, right to read websites reading and all or as she said i'm constructing a house my personal use but there is a consultant designer outside india i know him he will do better i will engage him so he will prepare all the drawings and send it to you it is an import of service there is a consideration it is taxable but who has to pay tax that we will see later there are other provisions persons who are liable to pay tax whether you are required to pay or they will pay who will pay that we will see but this is the story because from google you are receiving so many services correct youtube premium correct twitter premium facebook boost your page you are paying where the money is going outside india you are receiving a service you are importing a service for a consideration but it is not for your business it is for your personal use it says taxable it is taxable okay clear fine 71c the activity specified in schedule 1 so what is this schedule there are three schedules in the central goods and service tax law schedule 1 schedule 2 schedule 3 in that schedule 1 it says the following activities entered between two parties or one party also even without consideration are deemed to be a supply what is deemed to be deemed to be treated as assumed it's a fiction what is fiction which is not real you read fiction novels right means what it is actually not real it's created so it's a fiction created by law saying that the activity specified in schedule 1 made or agreed to be made without a consideration whereas in the clause here what we have read there must be consideration no consideration no contract no supply it is an exception they may ask a question what are the exception to the rule that there must be a consideration to constitute a supply this is one exception okay or they may ask what is the exception to the rule that a supply is taxable only when it is entered in the course or furtherance of the business import of service for consideration correct previous clause 71b now activity specified in schedule 1 even if it is entered for without consideration still taxable what is schedule 1 schedule 1 point number 1 what is the heading activities to be treated as supply even if made without consideration point, point number 1 permanent transfer <coughs> or disposal of business assets where input tax credit has been availed on such assets you bought you started your business in the year 2017 december okay fine okay you started the business you acquired so many assets fine you have taken you're not following you have taken in the yes sir you have taken itc now by the time 2023 you got enlightenment all this is maya what business what wife what children huh? let me go to himalayas let me go to himalayas and do tapas i want to leave this you started you you bought tickets now you are saying bye to all your relatives you are about to step out officer comes gst officer boss where are you going himalaya nine 
Okay, what happened to your assets? I disposed of. I don't want anything. These are all merit materialistic world. Okay. Okay. Oh, is it? Don't worry. You pay tax and then you go. What naina? Even for us also. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Yes, sir. Because you bought the asset, you take an ITC. Correct, ma? But I am throwing away. I am disposing it. I am not selling. Not required, sir. See this book. Page number so and so. Schedule 1. What it says? Uh, transfer of business assets. Or disposal. Throwing away. Whereas you bought mobile. Okay. One fine day you got angry with this mobile. Now you thrown into a dustbin. Department will come. You pay GST and then throw it. Sir, my own mobile, I'll throw it. Yes, sir. But you pay GST and throw it. Sir, why? You have taken ITC on it. Correct? Huh? When you have taken ITC, it should be used for the business or it should have been sold for a consideration. Only then I will get output tax. So simply, you cannot say, I'll go to Himalaya, I'm disposing all the assets. No. You pay GST and then go to Himalaya. Cancel the tickets. Because process. It's a process. And then you have to can apply for cancellation of registration, file the final return. Then they have to give you cancellation of registration. Then only freely, happily you can go. Otherwise, still GST will be going or not Bhagavan. Okay. That is the first point. Clear? Second one. Supply of goods or services are both between related persons or between distinct persons. Related persons defined elsewhere, distinct persons defined in section 25 and when made in the course or furtherance of business. It is in the course of furtherance of business only, but you are dealing with the related parties. You are dealing with the distinct persons. There are definitions. We will see. It says, if you are dealing with related persons or distinct persons, even if there is no consideration, it is a supply. You have to pay tax. Okay. One exception given, see the below part, provided that gifts, gifts not exceeding 50,000 rupees in value in a financial year by an employer to an employee shall not be treated as supply of goods or services or both. Sir, what? Why this employer-employee relation where this is? Because the dedicated person definition includes employer-employee. Employer-employee are deemed to be related only for the purpose of Schedule 1. Otherwise, he cannot come and say, please give me a share in your asset. I am a related person. <laughs> no, no, no. It is only for Schedule 1. Now, let us first see. Who is a related person? Where it is defined? Explanation to Section 15. There it is defined, related persons, persons shall be deemed to be related if such persons are officers or directors of in one another's business. I am a CEO in my firm as well as your firm. Got the point? If such persons are officers or directors of one another firm, similarly from your side. Or I am a director in X company, I am also a director in Y company. Now X and Y are deemed to be related. related. So why, what is the logic? Because the director can influence the transaction. He say, you do the business with them. That is why they are related. Okay. And then such persons are legally recognized as partners in the business. You are partners in some business. Your partners in XYZ and Co. Enough. 
you are deemed to be you part you both partners are deemed to be related any transaction between you will be covered by schedule 1 then such persons are employer or employee so employer employee any transaction see if it is made if the employee employer is giving something to employee for services provided by employee in the course of or as per the terms of employment it is okay that will be dealt by schedule 3 okay that is not taxable something else because my employee i engaged him for filing the gst returns but he also learn music he also knows music carnatic music very beautiful singer now i'll ask him teach carnatic music to my son this is extra this has nothing to do with your employment correct uh, that is tax okay that is not covered in schedule 3 okay next but there is an exception up to 50000 extra i can give per employee on any occasion for example laptop he is using for 15 years assume 15 years after that it cannot be called as laptop but you treat it as a laptop now it is valued at 25 30 35 35 40 49900 you said take it boss enjoy do festival he taken away it's okay but up to 50000 in a financial year not taxable now you are giving a vehicle which he is being using so far which costs 1 lakh it's crossed 50000 fully taxable okay next any person directly or indirectly owns controls or holds 25% or more of the outstanding voting stock or that means shares of both of them i am x you are y i have a 25 percent voting power in my company as well as in your company got the point so now these two companies are deemed to be related if one person x limited holds 25 percent of its voting power it also holds 25 percent y limited now we both are related then one of them directly indirectly controls the other maybe i am holding more voting power in your company so i am i am able to influence your decisions i am controlling you you will listen to me company said you read already huh? Huh? accustomed to act have you read anywhere directors provisions anyway next both of them we both are directly indirectly controlled by third party holding company subsidiary one subsidiary two we are under the joint control of holding company we are related actually we do not have any relation i do not hold even one percent in your company you will not hold even one percent in my company still we are related because we are both are jointly controlled by holding company got it next together control a third person we together so we both to only together if see if i am able to control you we are related right that is anyway already covered now i along with her controls you maybe joint holding company okay related they are members of the same family now again what do you mean by family see we are going it's like a river we are in supply 
then we said transaction covered by schedule 1 even if made without consideration is a supply then what is schedule 1 in that 1 2 then we said transaction between related persons is covered then what is related person in in the related person he is saying family members then what do you mean by family see this is how you need to read we are, we are not doing that that is why we are because you read everything but you don't know what you mean what do you mean by family he there he will give one relation he will not ask you write down schedule one he will ask huh? like that no he said x niece has supplied some goods to his uncle without consideration answer you will say family na chalo taxable but you have you have not read the definition of family whether niece is covered in the definition or not if niece is not covered this is not taxable i, I mean taxable uh, whatever other 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 than this treatment you have to give now the term person also includes legal persons not only companies firms and all if i i that's why i use the word i as an individual controlling you or x y under the control of h holding company got the point okay next persons who are associated in the business of one another in that one is sole selling agent you know the me, company said i think is the final syllabus sole selling agent there is only one agent or one distributor for the company and they will be deemed to be related persons and then here is the beautiful definition of you should read it before going to the examination hall what does it include spouse my spouse my wife for my wife my my wife point of view husband so spouse includes both wife and husband spouse children my children okay so my wife my children and then the parents grandparents my parents covered my grandparents covered my brothers covered and my sisters also covered of the person of ramakrishna sanghus parents ramakrishna sanghus grandparents my sisters my brothers but condition is only if they are wholly or mainly dependent on ramakrishna sanghu if they are not wholly or mainly dependent they are not my relatives we are talking about niece nephew huh? he is saying even your own brother if he is also a chartered accountant he is a government employee he is a private employee he is earning he is residing in his own house with his family he is earning his bread and butter he is no way even if you die also he is very fine one day he will cry next day okay time out in the office let us go you got the point now niece you are saying oh relative covered by schedule one taxable kumesa exam asala i read schedule one from that only he asked family related question i know now your friends family definition does not include niece they are cheating the institute they cannot ask so much tough questions <laughs> so tough family is enough now why is going to members also institute is not tough you are taking it light okay they are they are given in the syllabus because family means this is so even if the question says his own brother institute presses like that own 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 brother but partly dependent on ramakrishna not covered is partly dependent you hear it saying only so the moment you you will in the excitement you will forget or, or you your your thought will not see partly because you already read dependent now it will go to dependent 
no dependent brother brother dependent tax bill out bite kochi i'll prepare for final man where is the coaching rk sir is giving any final classes now okay out no so they are related persons clear now we also read distinct persons what is this dis distinct persons distinct persons means it is actually one person but having more than one branch possible rk sangu associates visakhapatnam may also have rk sangu associates branch in hyderabad chennai delhi calcutta bangalore correct ah if it is so and you are also having gst registration number i am also having gst registration number but pan number is same because rk sangu also says is only sole proprietary owned by ramakrishna sangu he will have only one pan number but i have two tin numbers three tin numbers four gstn numbers we are all called distinct persons sometimes section 22 amended around 21 22 where they said even within the state if you have different business vertical if you have different business vertical that means what i am into sugar manufacturing i am also manufacturing jute with the same business i can take two registration numbers or i have a premises in rk beach near rk beach i also have a premises in gajwaka i can go for two registration numbers earlier it was not there beginning so within the state also if you have two tin numbers you two are called distinct persons we'll take third case rk sangu associates Vishakhapatnam has GST number. RK Sangu Associates Bangalore doesn't have GST registration. Maybe they are not supplying any goods. When you are not supplying any goods, take hypothetical case. They don't have. They are unregistered. It's just a branch, just a marketing office, just a sales office. okay just a licensing office not sales office it's a licensing office even then we are registered we are deemed to be distinct persons so one person two offices two tin numbers distinct persons one person one pan number one establishment registered another establishment unregistered even then they are distinct persons now we got the story of distinct persons now let us go back to the provision supply of goods or services between related person my brother who is only dependent on me like that the word should be in your question paper only dependent on me i have given something to him some goods or i am providing some services to him without consideration obviously he is already dependent on me why we have why why should i charge tax bill this is a supply okay to my own wife son they are all deemed to be supply because we are related similarly it is a coromandel fertilizers andhra pradesh doing stock transfers to its branch in tamil nadu it happens stock transfers you know stock transfer no i am sending i am manufacturing of this here in andhra now i am after manufacturing i am moving the goods to my other branch taxable or not taxable all stock transfers are pre gst resume it is not taxable okay 
they they used to be form f they used to claim exemption i will send the goods to my tamil nadu my tamil nadu will branch will submit me form f i will submit to my department it is a proof that it is a stock transfer it is not a sale because earlier supply definition is not so much big see for two days we are reading only supply definition still only half way there only sale sale of goods is taxable what is sale of goods transfer of title in the goods from one person to another person for consideration now we saying even if there is no consideration it may be a supply even if it is not made in the course or furtherance of the business it may be a supply even if there is no consideration even then it may be a supply so many legs are there so stock transfers also tax got okay so that is subsection 2 okay now sub i mean schedule we are in schedule 1 second point what is the first point permanent transfer of assets see here it is taxable only i taken itc should very focus on the paper question if he says he has not availed any itc it's gone not taxable don't say he is going himalaya so it is taxable don't no you have to see whether he is now going for himalaya or cinema it is not the question whether he has claimed input tax or not is the question got it okay then supply of goods or services are both between related person distinct persons deemed to be a supply i don't mind even if there is no consideration third one supply of goods by a principal to his agent where the agent undertakes to supply such goods on behalf of the principal law of contracts principal agent relationship what is the relationship can you explain hmm? no 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 employer employee is different principal agent agency re relationship the acts of the agent or the acts of the principal shall be binding on the principal is it not have you not read this for the acts of the agent who is rep responsible ah oh, you read no indian contract act yeah the acts of the agent are not, not the acts of the agent the acts of the agent are the acts of the principal therefore who is liable principal is only liable that relation should be there if i am a principal you are an agent and there is a contract of agency between us that means you are acting with the third parties on my behalf you you will have two characteristics as an agent agent as a principal that means you doing your own business you can you can do no and then you are an agent you are also acting as an agent for me so you may have two characters like chandramukhi one for yourself your own you are doing your own business for you there may somebody may be there who is an agent for you for that transaction that business activity your principal is agent and you are agreed agency with me for this business activity i am the principal you are the agent and you are dealing with the third parties on my behalf you will tell sir we are the agents of rk sangha associates and then you are acting ah uh, taxable okay fine and fourth one import of services by a person from a related person or from any of his other establishments outside india in the course or furtherance of the business in 71b also we have read similar thing what is that 71b import of services whether or not in the course of the furtherance of the business so that is different import of service for consideration whether or not in the course in furtherance of the business, even personal use is there in 71b it is not it is different don't confuse yourself where what it says import of services by a person from a related person 
from uh, my brother is there like that or from any of his other branches other establishments mean what my branch is there i have a branch there in dubai okay but it should be in the course or furtherance of the business not for my personal use there it is for personal use we'll go back to that activities import of services for a consideration it is enough if there is a consideration so if there is a consideration you come here when you come here when there is a consideration you come here i don't mind whether it is for business or not taxable you go there schedule 1 there is no consideration now you check whether it is from related party or its branch no consideration it's okay schedule 1 no in schedule 1 there won't be any that is why you came to schedule 1 had there been consideration it's a different story there is no consideration you have come here but it should be in the course or furtherance of business it should be in the course or furtherance of the business if it is not in the course or furtherance of the business it is not covered by schedule 1 okay so schedule 1 is over point there are four points four serial numbers one permanent transfer of assets where itc is claimed two supply of goods and services between related persons distinct persons three principal and agent four import of service from related parties over now we'll go back to 7 c 1 c what it says activity specified in schedule 1 whether made or agreed to be made without go okay so when you come to c means you have to immediately read ah it is not that you will go to clause d subsection 2 no 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 wait when you read c go to schedule 1 read and come back every time 100 times you reading 1c 100 times you will go to schedule 1 then come back then go to next clause then you will come here only then you will come here after completing schedule 1 only then it is complete reading otherwise you are off of reading next 1a so subsection 1 is over ma in subsection 1 how many clauses a double a one a okay double a clubs b import of service c schedule one four clauses now we are going to subsection 1a okay we'll stop here uh, for today i have some meeting uh, so with this class in this class we have completed